Hi, I'm Sam Luce here with Isotope. In this video series, we are demystifying Dynamics Processing. Welcome to the second video where we are taking a look at compressors. Now I'm going to be using Neutron Pro, but compressors are found across the Music Production Suite Pro offering in plugins like Nectar Pro and Ozone Pro, and they work in similar ways. So what is compression and how can you use it to benefit your audio? We are about to find out. But first, please subscribe to the Isotope YouTube channel and make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever we upload something new. Let's jump straight in. Compression is a useful tool that allows us to reduce the dynamic range of an audio signal. Simply put, this means we can make the loud parts quieter and the quiet parts louder, effectively reducing the difference between the two. Compression can be beneficial in a range of different scenarios, but ultimately is going to be your first port of call when you have a signal that needs evening out. Think of a vocal take that has some words sticking out and some buried. Compression can help here. Or perhaps you have a drum kit that needs to be thicker and more weighty. Compression can also help here. The effect compression has on your sound can be full of character or practically invisible, depending on how you set the controls of your compressor. Let's take a look at these controls now and how they can affect your audio. We're going to use Neutron Pro for this, as its graphical display allows us to visualize compression in a really intuitive way. The threshold is the level at which compression starts to take place. Anything quieter than the dB level of the threshold will remain unaffected, but anything that breaches the threshold will be compressed. How much the sound is compressed is determined by the ratio. The ratio determines how much compression occurs once the signal rises above the threshold. In a standard compressor, a ratio of 3 to 1 will output just 1 dB for every 3 dB that breaches the threshold. Similarly, with a ratio of 5 to 1, the compressor will output 1 dB for every 5 dB that passes the threshold. You can think of this as a simple division. The compressor will divide the signal that breaches the threshold by the ratio and output accordingly. The attack time of a compressor is how long it takes to reach full compression. We can see this in Neutron Pro, represented by the orange line that moves downwards as the sound breaches the threshold. How steeply this line moves down is a reflection of your attack time. A swift downward movement is representative of a fast attack whereas a slower, more gradual downwards movement will occur with slower attack times. Slower attack times are great for when you want to maintain the transient detail of your sound, but bring down the overall level of louder sections. A faster attack time is useful when we want to bring down the level of our peaks much more quickly and create a more noticeable effect. You can think of the release time as the opposite of the attack. This is how quickly the compressor will allow the signal to return to normal after compression has taken place. This is also represented by the orange line on the display. This time you can see it after compression has taken place, making an upwards movement back towards the threshold line. The knee affects how a compressor behaves with signals that are very near the threshold. Think of it as a narrowing or widening of the threshold point smoothing out the transition between not compressing at all below the threshold and compressing at the chosen ratio above it. For a smoother and more musical handling of compression, you can set a soft knee where compression turns on gradually as signals approach the threshold and then pass it, whereas a hard knee setting is going to produce a more noticeable difference in tone. By design, a compressor will bring down the level of the peaks in your audio which will result in the overall level being quieter at the output than the input. To remedy this, we use makeup gain to bring the signal back up again after compression has taken place. In Neutron Pro, we have the handy auto function, whereby the plugin will monitor the output and reference it against the input, automatically compensating for any level change occurring due to compression. 
Let's hear how these controls affect a sound in practice by compressing some audio. The easiest way to hear compression is on a transient rich instrument, such as a drum kit. Let's compress this drum kit and alter the controls we've just covered to hear what effect they have. By lowering the threshold, we're affecting the point at which compression takes place. Lowering this line is telling the compressor to act upon quieter sounds as well as louder sounds. If I bring the line up towards 0 dB, it will only be affecting the loudest parts of the signal. Let's leave the threshold at minus 20 dB and alter the ratio. At the default ratio of 2 to 1, the compressor is going to reduce the peaks above the threshold by a ratio of 2 to 1. So if a signal breaches the threshold by 4 dB, the compressor will reduce that part of the signal and only output 2 dB. The compressor will effectively squash those 4 dB into the space of 2 dB. As I increase the ratio, the compressor will become more heavy handed. You can hear it become far more aggressive and it will reduce the peaks that breach the threshold by a larger amount. At a ratio of 6 to 1, if a signal breaches the threshold by 6 dB, the compressor will only output 1 dB and will again effectively squash those 6 dB into the space of 1 dB at the output. Let's leave this ratio at 4 to 1 and move on to the attack. At the default setting of 20 milliseconds, the compressor will listen to the incoming signal and take 20 milliseconds to reach full compression, dictated by the threshold and ratio. If I increase this time to 200 milliseconds, it's now taking 200 milliseconds to achieve that full compression. You'll be able to see on the orange line that far less compression is taking place because the compressor is taking too long to react to the incoming signal. The transients of a drum kit happen far quicker than 200 milliseconds, so it's not able to be as effective. Neutron Pro has a useful feature where we can see how the waveform is going to change as we alter our compression parameters. It's called oscilloscope, and you can toggle the view here. The oscilloscope shows the amplitude of the signal over time, as measured at the final output stage of the plugin, after dynamics processing has been applied. Notice how as I adjust the attack time from fast to slow, we see more of the transient present at the start of the waveform. As the attack slows down, it allows more of the transient to pass, and this is reflected in the display. We can also hear how the kick's transient has more impact and sounds far punchier. If we bring the attack and release controls down such that they are working very quickly on the kick, we get a completely different sound and visually we can see how our settings are impacting the transient and sustain elements of the audio. This is a great way to quickly check if you're cutting off too much of the transient if you're not quite sure. With the release at a default 100 milliseconds, the compressor is taking 100 milliseconds to allow the signal to return to normal after the threshold has been breached. A good way to think of this is how long the sound is going to be compressed for. With a very short release time, like 10 milliseconds, the compression will be released very quickly, with only the initial transient being reduced. With a longer release time of, say, 500 milliseconds, compression is occurring for far longer and the compressor may not be able to release to no compression before the next hit occurs. We can adjust the knee to taste. If we feel it's sounding too heavy handed, we can bring the knee up, which will result in a far smoother handling of transients. Or if we don't think it's aggressive enough, we can bring the knee value down. If we get an aggressive sounding compression effect on our audio, 
but we feel that the initial punch of the dry material is getting lost. Neutron Pro has a handy mix control where we can bring in some of the original uncompressed signal. By bringing this mix control down to 50, we're bringing 50% of the original signal back in. This is going to give us back the uncompressed transients of the original audio, but retain the weight of the compressed sound. This can be a super handy technique when you want the best of both worlds. As we get more comfortable with the parameters of a compressor, we can start exploring more advanced features such as side chains, where we can trigger compression on your chosen track based on another channel. Or we can compress our audio only when a signal is present on another channel, perhaps to let it get out of the way in a busy mix. Think about a bass line and a kick drum. You may want to compress the bass line when a kick hits to allow the bottom end to come through without being clouded by the low frequencies of the bass. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you understand compression and how you can use it in your next production to get great results. Remember, sign up for your free trial for Music Production Suite Pro, where you can use compressors in Ozone Pro, Neutron, and loads more. Click the link in the description to check it out now. I'm Sam Luce, thanks so much. Take care.